Hey, listen, I'm glad that you're here, um, and happy Memorial Day, and I uh, hope you enjoy it. How many of you have a day off tomorrow? Woo-hoo! Yeah, very nice. Uh, it's supposed to be really nice outside, and a chance for you to go out and become frustrated with your grill and barbecue and all of that. Um, we're going to finish up our series from this month on worship, and then in a little while we head into Romans chapter 3, if you want to grab your Bible, we'll uh, be headed there in just a little bit. If you're a guest with us here today, thank you so much for stopping by. Uh, those of you that are here uh, most every week, welcome home. We're glad that you're here. If you're a guest on the way out, be sure to pick up your, your free gift. Uh, we have a CD uh, for you. And if you're relatively new to the church and do not have a copy of the CD, please take one. We have about 500 of them we need to give away. And um, we'd be happy to let you have one. It's a, uh, a CD of some worship music that our team recorded uh, several years ago. Uh, Doug Talley, where are you? Nice to see you. Doug is from the state. Some of you know Doug. And I'm uh, glad that you're here. And uh, if you want to find Doug afterwards and beat him up, you're free to do that. <laughs> hey, uh, this coming Sunday, the Academy is having their graduation at 3 o'clock. I hope that you will uh, plan to be here to show your support to our teachers and our children. Um, you're more than welcome to, uh, to stop by and uh, also give you a chance to meet the staff and, and Ms. Sylvia, who has been out of, uh, out of the country for a couple weeks. She'll be back with us as well. Uh, in two weeks, a little less than two weeks, is the seminar, the uh, Live It or Die It seminar. Uh, if you have not signed up, you need to do that by Wednesday. If you haven't signed up by this coming Wednesday, um, we're not going to let you in. And the reason is because we have to buy food. And so uh, Ms. Karen Knox is going to be with us sharing um, her biblical perspective on diet and health. And uh, or she's actually going to cook lunch for us that day. So we need to be able to buy food and we need to know how many people are coming. So if you're planning to be there... Uh, we need to know right away. In a couple of weeks, uh, we're going to have our very first cookout and hangout on Wednesday nights in June, July, and August, one Wednesday each month. We're going to uh, have some barbecue grills here at the church, and the idea is that after work, you throw your kids or neighbors in the car, come here and hang out. Uh, part of the goal is for us to not lose touch with each other through the summer, but also we're hoping that some of our academy families, as they're picking the kids up, will just kind of hang around and, and uh, have some good times with us. We'll probably play kickball, volleyball, and that kind of thing. You'll need to bring your own food, kind of a dish to pass, and also whatever meat, if you do meat, uh, to, to uh, throw on the grill. We're working to uh, supply enough barbecue grills so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, about a month from now, the Rainforest Adventure is going to start. That's our vacation Bible school. And uh, remember, we're collecting the uh, little cardboard tubes uh, out of your paper towel holders, and we still need about 30 of those. So if you could continue to save those, give them to Miss Lenora. And uh, if you would like to volunteer to be a part of our staff, that we please see Lenora as well. Uh, you'll see some posters around the church that uh, look kind of like this guy climbing the mountain. Uh, there are different ways of teaching. Sometimes it's called thematic or when there's a theme, like this month, it's been about worship. <clears throat> and uh, what I've decided to do is in the summer each year, I want to do something that I'm calling the Summer Summit. And rather than do teaching by theme, we're going to do what's called expository teaching, which is where you take one section of scripture and you teach straight through it from beginning to end. And for the first one for this summer, the, the series is called Mountain View, and uh, we are going to study the Sermon on the Mount, and that will begin next week, and will run all of June, July, and August, and then next summer we'll do something different. But um, this will start next week, and so you now know where we're headed for the next uh, 13 weeks, so feel free to read it, you know, 13 or 14 times. And, uh, but we'll look at some of the things that uh, Christ is trying to teach. Here's why. Our mission at France is pretty simple, connecting people to people, people to God. It's to love God with our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And some of us have always wondered, well, what does God think about X, Y, Z? Well, if Christ is the incarnation of God, which he claimed to be and which we believe he is, then we can understand God's heart a little bit by understanding the things that Jesus taught. And so we're going to look through the Sermon on the Mount. And there's some really tough stuff in there. I mean, there's some, there's some issues in there that I really don't want to talk about, to be quite honest with you, but we have to. And the reason is because our desire is to become Christ-like. Our desire is to have his mind and his heart and to see people like he sees them. And one thing I want you to read as you read through the Sermon on the Mount, I want you to count how many times Jesus says, you've heard it said that, but I say, you think this is true, but this is really the truth. And last week, remember how we talked about it, it's important that what we think is really true. And so what we hope to do in 13 weeks is to be able to catch the mind of Christ, to be able to see things and people like he does. So that's what we're going to do for uh, the summer. Let's read uh, Romans chapter 3, beginning at verse 21, and we'll head through to verse 26. 
But now, God has shown us a way to be made right with him without keeping the requirements of the law as was promised in the writings of Moses and the prophets long ago. Listen to this. We are made right with God by placing our faith in Jesus Christ. And this is true for everyone who believes, no matter who we are, for everyone has sinned and we all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, with undeserved kindness, declares that we are righteous he did this through Christ Jesus when he freed us from the penalty of our sin. For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. People are made right with God when they give their money to the church. People are made right with God when they do all the right things. People are made right with God when they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life, shedding his blood. And this sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who had sinned in times past. For he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. Listen to this. God did this to demonstrate his righteousness. For he himself is fair and is just. And he declares sinners, that would be us, to be right in his sight when they believe in Jesus Christ. God, we ask in the next few minutes that we spend together considering the amazing gift of grace that today our eyes would be open, our hearts would be open to what you want to share with us in Christ's name. Amen. Grace is what makes us different from every other religion. Would you agree? Did you guys see the, uh, the, the series of articles in the uh, Sentinel, How Do You Get to Heaven? How many of you saw that series? And it was on Channel 6, wasn't it where it was? And they asked five or six different church groups, how does a person get to heaven? And they asked a, they asked a priest, they asked a Buddhist, they asked all these different people. And um, actually, Mondi uh, emailed me the link, and I was reading through it. And I don't know if you read what it says, but they all said, well, first you have to do this, and then you have to do this, and then you have to do this, 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 this. And I was tired just reading it. <laughs> because I wouldn't want to have to do all those things. Because almost every other faith system is about us doing something. It's about us continuing to do something. But the scripture says that we become righteous or right with God, not when we do a whole bunch of things, but when we do what? Believe. I'm sorry? Believe. When we believe. That's what makes us right, is to believe that Jesus really died in my place. That's what it boils down to. And so as I was reading through this, in this, this series of, of articles, I'm thinking, oh my goodness, there's a group of people today in Orlando going, I can't do all that. And I got to the end of it, and I was thinking, man, am I really glad that I don't have to keep going down my checklist of things for me to do, for me to do, for me to do. Because on my checklist, I, I, maybe your checklist is different, but I, I usually get like 80% on my checklist. And, and at most schools, that's like a B, maybe. And I, I really don't want Bs when it comes to God. I really would prefer As. And there are some days I get 65%. And that's not a good grade at all. And I'm glad there's a thing called grace. If you don't know what grace is, there's an old acronym. It's God riches, God's riches at Christ's expense. My way of saying it is it's God not wiping you out now. He's giving you another chance. Because like, it's God being able to go, oh, it's all right, man. I'll cut you some slack. We're going to grade on the curve today. That's what grace is. I'm glad I don't have to checklist my way into heaven. But the Bible makes it pretty clear. I have to believe. That's what we have to do to be right with God. Here's the weird thing. I, I got three thoughts about grace for you today. Grace creates a tension. Say what? No, this is what I mean. There's a give and take to grace. Grace is a give, but that means there also has to be a take on the backside. There's a cause and effect, if you will, maybe even a before and after. And this is what I mean. On one hand, grace ignites a passion in 